This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. In The New Thinking, the essay from which I quoted in Chapter 1, Rosenweig provides valuable information about the structure and purposes of The Star of Redemption, published four years earlier. Rosenweig is well aware that The Star is a difficult book, but he thinks the difficulties the reader faces are in part common to all significant philosophical works, as he explains in this essay. The first pages of philosophical books are met by the reader with special reverence. He believes that they are to be the basis for all that follows. Therefore, he also thinks that it would suffice to refute them in order to have refuted the whole. Hence, the enormous interest in Kant's doctrine of space and time in the form in which he developed it in the beginning of The Critique. Hence, the comical attempts to refute Hegel with respect to the first triple step of his logic, and Spinoza with respect to his definitions, and hence the helplessness of the general reader. Rosenweig uses the English words here before philosophical books. He thinks they must be especially logical, by which he means the dependence of each subsequent sentence on each preceding one, such that when the famous one stone is pulled out, the whole comes tumbling down. In truth, this is nowhere less the case than in philosophical books. Here, a sentence does not follow from its predecessor, but much more likely from its successor. It will be of little help to whomever has not understood a sentence or paragraph, if in his conscientious belief that he may leave nothing behind uncomprehended, he reads it over and over again, or even starts once more from the beginning. Philosophical books defy the ancient regime strategy that thinks it may not leave any unconquered fortresses in the rear. They want to be conquered in a Napoleonic manner, in a bold advance on the enemy's main force, after whose defeat the small border fortresses will fall on their own. Rosenweig's account of the structure of the star in The New Thinking, however, reveals an additional reason why the ancient regime strategy of trying to understand each sentence thoroughly, or indeed each larger section of the star on its own, on a first reading, is not going to work. It will fail because there is a sense in which the whole of part one of the star is self-undermining. But this aspect cannot be seen until one has completed its reading and gone on to part two. The new thinking tells us what is said in part one of the star is nothing other than a reductio ad absurdum, and, at the same time, a rescue of the old philosophy. Rosenweig then explains this apparent paradox, and the explanation will not surprise a reader who has read Understanding the Sick and the Healthy, as Rosenweig's contemporary readers had not. The explanation is that the old philosophy, which Part One pushes to what Rosenweig sees as its limits, tries to account for the three mountains of Understanding the Sick and the Healthy, World, Man, and God, by considering each an abstraction from the other two, and looking for an essence. The search has to fail. As Rosenweig explains in the language very close to the language of understanding the sick and the healthy, all philosophy asked about essence. It is by this question that it distinguishes itself from the unphilosophical thinking of healthy human understanding. For the latter does not ask itself what a thing really is. It is sufficient for it to know that a chair is a chair. It does not. It does not ask whether it might really be something entirely different. Philosophy asks exactly this when asking about essence. The world is by no means permitted to be the world. God is by no means permitted to be God. Man by no means permitted to be man. Rather, all must really be something totally different if they were nothing else but actually only what they are, then philosophy, heaven forbid and forfend, would ultimately be superfluous. At least a philosophy which absolutely might ferret out something entirely different. If the search for an essence standing behind and enabling us to use any one of the three concepts of man, world, God, an essence expressible in different words, was the great quest of the old philosophy, and that whole search was misguided, 
his philosophy then at an end?